we're going to talk about the universal quantifier. So the universal quantifier is what's used when you talk about all people, all dogs, all humans. So this is a silly joke using the universal quantifier. It's obviously an invalid argument, but we'll talk more about why in a few videos. And this is video two, video four in module two. So universal quantifier looks like an upside down A and it stands for for all. So in our video or in our argument from the previous video, we had this argument. We said all men are mortal. Socrates is a man and Socrates is mortal. But we weren't sure how to deal with this all men part. Right? So that's going to be using a quantifier. So another way to, of writing this, all men are mortal, is to say that for all humans, H, H is mortal. Right? Um, further, we can extend this. We can simplify it even further and say for all H in the set of humans, H is mortal. Here, H is the set of all human beings. Okay, so this is a literal translation for all. And anytime you see that upside down A, you can just read it like that. Um, you can find this in your computer, obviously, as I was able to do that there. It's usually in the symbols, or if you do the mathematical equations, you can find it. So let's look at the universal statement. We say... If Q of X is a predicate, which we learned about in the last video, and D is the domain of X, the universal statement is for all elements X in the domain, Q of X is true. So an example of this is all cats have fur. It's a statement, it's a universal statement. It covers, um, covers all elements in the domain. So in this example, the domain is cats. So this is saying that all cats have fur. I'm saying something universal about my domain. Another way of writing this, let's switch to black. Another way of writing this is to say for all x, if x is in the domain, then q of x is true, right? And if I just write q of x, that says q of x is true. If I wanted to say q of x was false, I'd say not q of x. If I just say Q of X, this means Q of X is true, right? So I'm saying for all the elements X, if X is in our domain, then the quantifier is true for X. In other words, our domain is a truth set for our quantifier. Another way of writing this using Boolean logic is to say that Q of X1 is true, and Q of X2 is true, and all the way up to the last element in our domain, Q of X N is true, right? That they're all true. So this is using Boolean algebra where we have ands. We have ands, so this is a conjunction of quantifiers, and we're saying 
it's true for every element in our domain. And again, this is called the universal statement. So, if this statement is true, if, if and only if, so this statement is true if and only if, that's what that means, q of x is true for every x in d in our domain. So what would make this statement false? I want you to think about this for a minute. Is it false for every x in d or false for, for, is it false for every x in d? or false for some x and d. Now remember, we are living in a binary world. Things are either true or false. So if this statement is false, what does that mean? Well, there's only two possibilities. It's either true or false. So if it's true, we know that every x in the domain makes it true. So it's tempting for people to say that the solution here is A, that it's false for every element of the domain. But that leaves, so if we say this means it's true for every element of the domain, if the opposite were it's false for every element of the domain, then that would leave something left. It would be, the, the third option would be it's true for some and false for some. But that would mean there are three options. And there's not three options. There's only two options. So the opposite of it's true for everything is actually that it's only false for some. Now, some could be all. But it's not that strong of a statement. We're leaving it open. We're saying, well, it could be false for some of them. It could be false for all of them. It's just not true for all of them. Right? So the negation of all cats, that should not be an apostrophe there, all cats have fur is going to be some cats don't have fur. Okay, so this is, a, this is a subject that's tricky for a lot of people. It's confusing for a lot of students. Again, I want the opposite of all cats have fur. The opposite. So if I break the world into two parts, here's the world, here's the universe, and I'm breaking it into two parts. Here's the part that says all cats have fur. And what's left? Well, to, there are some cats, maybe all cats, but some cats don't have fur. If we have a binary decision, these are the only two choices. Right? And in fact, the negation is correct. So this is in fact the truth statement. Remember, a negation, there, each, each, that's what I'm looking for. Um, each statement is either true or false. So if the negation is false, then that must mean, or if the original statement is false, then that must mean that the negation is true and vice versa. There's only the two choices. So here are some pictures. I love this one of a hairless cat. Now, of course, you could argue that it still technically has hair, right? It is a mammal. It's got hair on its tail. It's got whiskers. But uh, for the purposes of this example, I think it works. So let's do another example, a numerical example. I want to consider this statement that for all x in the domain x squared is greater than or equal to x. 
and our domain is the numbers one through five. So how would I show that this statement is true? This is a universal statement. To show that this is true, I'm saying something is true for every element in the domain. Well, okay, so I need to go through every element in the domain and show that this statement holds. So, we're going to look at this first element in the domain, and I'm going to say for 1, 1 squared is greater than or equal to 1 is the same as saying 1 is greater than or equal to 1, which is true. Okay, now let's look at the second element in our domain. 2. 2 squared is greater than or equal to 2. And again, I'm just substituting it in to my statement here. And this, if we simplify, this is 4 is greater than or equal to 2. That's also true. And now number 3. We have to go through to prove that this statement is true. It's a universal statement, so I'm going to have to walk through every element in the domain. So this is 9 is greater than or equal to 3. That is also true. Later, we'll see how to prove things without doing this. But at the moment, this is what we got. Finally... So, now I need to conclude somehow, so I'm going to write a concluding statement. Therefore, since x squared is greater than or equal to x for every x in our domain, the statement for all x in the domain x squared is greater than or equal to x is true. Now this, not surprisingly, is called a proof by exhaustion. Because it is exhausting. No, really. Because we're exhausting all the options in our domain. Right? We're going through and we're looking at every element of this domain and we're demonstrating that the statement is true. So that's why this is called a proof by exhaustion and it is how we prove a universal statement true. So. Now, obviously, this wouldn't work if I said the domain was all integers or all positive integers. It may be true, and you can look at this pattern and say, yes, I believe that's true for all positive integers, but you obviously can't go through and do a proof by exhaustion on all integers. You'd be at it forever, by definition. So that's what we're going to cover in the next module, is we're going to cover proof techniques over infinite sets. But at the moment... We can prove it a universal statement over a finite set um, by exhaustion. Let's do another example. This looks mighty similar, doesn't it? We still have the same statement here, or predicate, I should say. But now our domain has changed. All right, so now our domain is the real numbers. Okay, and we want to show that this is false. So 
when we were doing the integers before, we could see all the ways that it made it true with numbers one through five. Can you think of uh, a number, a real number that would make this false? Well, we could try like negative two. And we're going to have negative two squared is greater than or equal to negative two. This works out to four is greater than or equal to negative two. Well, that's correct. So that's true. So that doesn't help me prove this is false. Now, do I have to go through every real number to prove this is false? No, all I need to do is find one example. This is called a proof by counterexample. If I can find one example that proves this false, then I'll be done. So negative two didn't work. Let's erase that. Let's try another one. Maybe I'll try a fraction. Now notice I do need to demonstrate that um, in a formal proof, I would have to demonstrate this. Notice that x is a real number. And I may have to use a definition of what is a real number if I want to be really formal. At the moment, I'm just going to say we are in our domain. That's what I'm doing here is, yes, x is in the domain. And if we say, one half squared is greater than or equal to one half. This is the same as saying, well, what's one half squared? One half squared is actually one quarter. Is one quarter greater than or equal to one half? No, this is false. So I found a number, x, that's in my domain, and I've showed that the statement does not work or the predicate does not work for that value of x. So I have proved that this universal statement right here, and this is a statement, not a predicate, because I'm specifying the elements that can be set into it. So this is called a universal statement. Um, I'm demonstrating it's false. So I can conclude by say, saying, therefore, since x squared is not greater than or equal to x, for some x in the domain of real numbers, this statement for all x in the real numbers, x squared is greater than or equal to x, is false. Okay. And again, this is how we show, to show, to prove a universal statement false, we use a proof by counterexample.